Hi everybody, it's Diane with Sew Boutique. And today we're gonna start working on our duffel bag. This is the Get Out of Town duffel bag designed by, I should say, by Annie Patterns. <laughs> and this is one I've always wanted to do. It is just a standard duffel bag and not too complex, doesn't have a lot of extra things. It is mainly to store your goodies when you travel. So it is a duffel bag that measures about 10 inches high, 16 inches wide, and seven inches deep. So it has a really good footprint. And I like how it's it's kind of a rectangle and it has a flat top and just perfect, I think, for what I'm gonna use it for, which of course is travel. The outside of the bag has um, storage on four sizes, four sides, I should say. I'm gonna close that up for a second. So on each side, there's a place to store something, <laughs> whatever you would like to have easy access to. Okay, and then there is one zipper compartment on the side as well for putting something in there that you just wanna make sure doesn't fall out. The handles on the outside are perfect for over the shoulder here or just holding. And then there's a strap as well, adjustable strap, I should say, for over the shoulder or if you're somebody who does a crossbody, we want to lengthen this and you'll be able to do that with the adjustable, um, excuse me, the adjustable strap that you have here as well. So there are so many different things that can be done with the straps here. And then the inside of the bag is, I'm gonna try to hold it open for you, but it is just a simple bag that has storage compartments on the side. And one side, the storage is with using a coordinated cotton fabric. So it's a sturdy, sturdy area for putting something in the sides. And then the other side has optional mesh, okay? And you can finish the edge of the mesh using fold over elastic or again, your coordinated cotton fabric. So all in all, it's I'm gonna find it to be probably a pretty nice bag to work on. I did make a couple of our samples that we have back here. So I have some basic knowledge of working with the Biani patterns. Um, so I hope I can share my experiences and tips and things that I learned along the way for how to make this specific bag, which is the get out of town duffel. Okay, let's get started working on our bag. But the first thing I wanna share with you is the pattern, the get out of town pattern itself, which is, open it up. The front has a, has a great picture and outline of what the, the bag features are. The back of the pattern, and if any of you are familiar with the buy any patterns, is a list of all of the components that you need for your bag. And I am gonna stop right there because one of the things that we have been trying to do here to help you um, or to help simplify the process of gathering all of the accessories for a bag is to create kits for you. So on our website, you are going to see um, a project kit for the get out of town bag, as well as several other of our by Annie project bags. And we have a stock of soft and stable of notions, all the hardware, different colors of mesh, as you can see over in the background here, mesh, fold over elastic and zipper colors in all of the various lengths. We are trying to keep all of that in stock simply because um, it's easier for us to make sure that we have all the components when we select our fabric for the fabric coordinates for a project bag. So take a look at our project kit if you'd like to follow along and select any fabric combination that you'd like and we'll make sure that all of the components are in your project kit. So for example, here's a project kit that we had put together for the ultimate travel bag, 
which is the bag right over there um, that has the Vine Autumn Fire plus the Merlot on the handles. And so each project kit will include the pattern. Actually, take that back. It's optional. If you have the pattern, you don't need another one. But the pattern, it has the fabric. So this particular Ultimate Travel Bag has three different fabrics. An outside, a lining fabric, which gets typically gets quilted together with stopped and stable. And then an, a coordinating fabric that is used for handles and um, finishing of edges of pockets and things like that. And then we also include the zippers that are required, any mesh, fold over elastic, and this particular bag here uses one and a half inch hardware um, to finish everything off and to put everything together. So um, our kits will include anything that is needed for your project. So the get out of town duffel, let me take you through what is needed for that specific project and what I've gathered so far. And I'm just gonna set this in here and we'll set that aside for later. So the get out of town duffel two, there's a main fabric and a lining fabric that are one yard each. And I've selected our coordinate group that is the Gardenista Vine Lake. My lining is going to be the Phoenix Sand and Surf. And I've already quilted this, so that's why that's looking a little stiff. Um, and then my coordinating fabric is the Spray Lake in our cotton as well. So those are the three fabrics I'm going to use. And for this pattern, the coordinating fabric takes a little bit more. It takes a yard and a quarter. And like I said, the soft and stable, which is a yard, and that I've already quilted into um, my outer fabric and my lining. So I'm ready to go to cut fabric and we'll, we'll get there. But we also need fusible interfacing. And the fusible interfacing will be used in the pockets as stabilizer for the inside pocket. And I believe, I was gonna say, I believe outside pockets, but I believe it's in the inside. We need mesh. And I selected the color of natural because it's going to be inside against the sand surf. And so I am gonna use the mesh with a coordinating fold over elastic to finish off the top edge. I am gonna use the, the lakes uh, cotton for the bottom edge of it um, because that's going to be sewn to the bag. So I just felt that I just needed it for the top edge. So I'm gonna use the uh, fold over elastic there. And then we need zippers. So I am going to use, I don't think I have it here, but they are the navy zippers. And I'm just gonna grab one here. We'll need both a 24 and a 30 inch zipper. However, if you have the zipper by the yard, you'll need a 10 inch cut and an 18 inch cut. And you'll need three zipper pulls, okay? So that's what we're going, to, I'm gonna use the navy for that and um, cut mine by the yard. For the zippers. The next item on her inventory list on the back is strapping because all of the um, uh, the straps and the handles um, we have to have our strapping. So we will, and I did here, cut five and a half yards and I'm just going to use the white one inch strapping. So we have that as well as the hardware. So now we need our um, hardware. This is the D-rings and I selected antique brass because I think that's gonna really pull out the color of, let's see if I can, here, I'll use one of my samples here. Um, I think it's gonna really pull out the color that is in 
the, the Gardenista vine motif on the fabric. So we have these available for any of our kits in the silver, the black, and the antique brass. So all of mine are going to be antique brass. And so this is the D-rings. We need wide mouth sliders for our straps. And then we also need swivel hooks for each side of the outside strap that can be removed if you would like to. Okay. And optional, of course, is your base stabilizer that goes inside the bottom of the bag. And I am going to put one of those in simply because it'll just give that that extra level of stability when I add clothing or shoes or a makeup bag or whatever to the travel bag. And that acrylic needs to be six inches by 14 and three fourths. So that plan that one out as well, whatever you'd like to use as your stabilizer. And then thread. And I'm going to use uh, Superior Threads So Fine which is um, polyester and it's a 50 weight. I really love the so fine thread and it coordinates nicely with our um, lake color. And we also have this available on our website as well. And so I'll be using this. Now, the other thing I wanted to share with you, I'm not gonna go through each one of, of the optional notions that you're going to need. Um, those are going to be quite obvious as we go through each step. I'll let you know what I'm using. Um, but I am going to be using a very strong needle in my sewing machine. I like to use a jeans needle, a uh, top stitch. And I'm, I think I have, I shouldn't say top stitch. I'm using a Bowen needle, which is a uh, 14 size for jeans. And um, I really love the strength of that needle. And it does need to be a little stronger because of the number of layers we end up sewing through when we make a bag like this. Um, and so make sure that you have a really, really strong, larger needle. And your sewing machine might be fine using an 11 or a 12 or a 10, whatever it happens to be, that's fine. I just know that with the sewing machine that I'm going to be using, I really like a strong needle. And so I'm gonna work with a, a size 14, which is a jeans needle, okay? So those are all the things that we need, all the components that we need to make this bag. And again, if you're looking for a simplistic way of getting all of that information, all that together in one project kit, definitely take a look at our website at sobatique.com so you can, can get your project started with all the components there and not have to race around and find them. The first thing I want to take you through is a little bit about the pattern and to definitely tell you as pretty much any any project step one is to really read the pattern um, and try to read it through if it's not word for word but so that you understand how the pattern is written and the steps and the sequence of the steps that you go through to make a bag if you haven't made a bag before. But if you have, you're going to have a general gist of how this steps through. Um, but the first page is really all about all the little things that you need to have ready. So take the time to get them ready. I'm not gonna read each one of these, but it basically includes your iron, ironing board, um, clips and pins and scissors and your stiletto for, for using that around any curves when you're stitching. Um, any of the uh, rulers that you might need, or this has a half inch bias uh, tape maker to make the bias that, that is used inside the bag, just different things like that. So take the time to get everything ready and I'll go through everything that's needed for each step that we take along the way, um, but definitely make sure that you have all your components. And then the biggest thing that I do right away is make the bias binding that is needed for the edges and finishing edges of any pockets or also inside the bag because, and I'll take a moment here to show this to you, but all of the Biani bags have every edge is finished and enclosed and it adds to the longevity of your bag as well as just the overall look um, and stability actually. 
And so inside the bag, and I'm showing you kind of a corner, there is binding covering what would really be open edges. And so all the way along wherever there's a corner, so inside the bag here and down everywhere has binding to cover it and to secure it inside. And so we'll have to have that. And I believe we start with an 18 by 18 inch square to make continuous binding. Uh, and her steps to create it, if you haven't done that, are simple to follow. And so we'll take you through that. But also is cutting out all of the components of your bag from the quilted fabric as well as from your coordinating fabric and then making each one of the individual pieces. So the first thing that we end up doing is making the pockets, getting the pockets ready, getting for each one of the sides and inside, getting the straps ready, getting the shoulder strap ready so that when we do assemble it at the end of the pattern, it's all ready to go and we just assemble it. As you go through and work through her pattern, make sure that you're using the little squares as your check mark. So you're gonna go through each one to make sure where you've finished and where you've left off. Um, for any interruptions that you have in your life, you're definitely gonna put this down and you're gonna walk away and do something else. Um, completing a bag like this from start to finish uh, takes a little bit of time. So definitely make sure that you check each one of your your uh, steps off as you go. So without further ado, we are going to um, cut out our fabric pieces to make this bag because I've already quilted my fabric. This is our coordinate. So we'll, we'll cut that out in a moment. Um, but I took the time the, during this week here to use my long arm to quilt the fabric. And here again is the outside. It is the Garden East Divine Lake. And the yard of Soft and Stable is inside. And then the lining fabric will be our Phoenix Sand Surf. And I used, I don't know if you can see this, but I tried to find a leaf or a viney look that um, would look really nice on top of the outer fabric. And you really can't see a lot of the motif, but it's gonna give it really, really nice texture as we build our bag, okay? And it's uh, soft and stable is, as it described, very soft and stable. <laughs> it's the perfect name. Um, and so it's gonna give that little extra stability to your bag um, as well. So if you don't have that product, um, find another product that is just as strong. Uh, traditional batting, like a wool batting or a polyester cotton or um, something like that is not going to give you that level of stiffness that you are going to want out of this bag. And let me show you, I, I created an Easy Does It uh, cosmetic bag out of leftover fabric from a quilted garment that I made. And um, this has wool batting in it. And so it is just, it's two pieces of fabric with batting in it. So it's not as strong as I would have wanted it to be. And I did this purposely because I wanted to see the difference between how this would stand up versus the soft and stable. And um, it'll work fine for what I want to do with this, but it's, it's a different feel to it. And you know, you never know until you test it out. And I just think that the soft and stable will be an added benefit to this bag, okay? So let's get um, cutting out this fabric and into all the various pieces that we need for the bag. Okay, I have finished cutting out all of the components from the coordinating fabric and from the quilted fabric. And a couple of things to think about. On the last page of this pattern, and I don't know for sure if it's on every pattern because I haven't looked at every pattern, but I know on this one and several that I've worked on, there is, whether you call them labels or 
they're not stickies because it's just a piece of paper, but they are um, labels for every single piece that you cut out for this bag. Take the time to cut this out and to label, use them to label each one of your pieces. I did that here. Um, if you have access to a copier, definitely copy that page so that you have it for reference later. But um, I, and I did do that. I copied them and pinned them. You could use paper clips as well or clips if you have a lot of clips at home, but pin them to each one of your pieces. There are so many <laughs> cuts in here that are two by seven or three and a half by six. And they all kind of look the same when you have them sitting on your table. So definitely use the, the labels and um, label every piece of fabric that you cut. It is, uh, I didn't do that on my very first project. Um, and I have taught myself and reminded myself of that project and do that for every single one of my projects now. Um, and also label your interfacing and the mesh and the straps. So there are three or four different measurements for the straps for the handles and the shoulder strap. So label those as well. It just saves so much effort when you have to go back and accomplish sewing that particular step. And then the quilted pieces are all cut out as well for the main bag and the pockets on the outside and the shoulder strap pad that you use. Um, so all of that is cut out. So definitely take the time to do that and label them. What I have decided to do, because I typically make more than one project of a specific pattern. Um, and in our kits, what we do is we include, um, there's this plastic bag that we use when we put the strapping in our kits. And I use that to keep everything that's left over from a project and just to keep it in all one spot. So this is the leftover interfacing. There's like a little two inch piece of strap. Am I gonna use that again? I have no idea, but I'm just keeping it. Um, and that's where I put every single one of my labels when I'm done with the project. I just put them back in here. I don't throw them away. I keep them in the bag. And when I put my pattern back together after I'm done, I keep this bag inside my pattern and it's all in one place. So I have all my information for the next time that I make the bag, okay? Um, just a helpful hint. The next piece of the project is to curve the corners. Each one of the corners on this bag, they're not perfectly straight because it's very, it is very hard to add binding to a straight edge like you would a quilt. And with the bulk of the layers that we're working with here, we don't want that added fussiness. So each corner on the bottom is slightly rounded. And Annie recommends um, a two and a half inch curve around the edges of the bag. So on the main pattern piece, and I've already done this on this particular piece, but I have added a round corner to it. She references in her pattern a, um, a Creative Grids two and a half inch circle that you can use as your guide. I um, know that the bottom of a Sew Fine or a Superior Threads thread cone is two and a half inches. There's a guide. And if you use a tape measure that happens to be round. This is a 120 inch round tape measure. This is two and a half inches, exactly the same as the thread. And the curve on a rotary blade of Olfa, I haven't checked the other ones, um, but there's, I mean, my point is that there's so many things that you have that are two and a half inches or abouts. This is a little bit bigger because the blade is two and a half inches, but the curve is what we're looking for, is that rounded edge. So use the same rounded edge for each one of the pieces for your project. And this pattern only requires the rounded edges on the main body bag, as well as the ends, the two ends that are on each side. 
And so I use, simply just use a marking pencil. My favorite is this white pencil from Bowen. And we simply lay down, set down the end, whatever happens to be that rounded curve that you're looking for, and draw your line. And I have these two just simply stacked up on top of each other because that is the end that I'm going to have on both sides. And use my scissor and cut along that line. So we end up with the same curve on all four corners, which are now rounded. Okay, so just find something in your house if you don't have a Creative Grids ruler that's two and a half inches or that round circle template, then any of these spools, if you have a spool or the tape measure, or again, your rotary blade, whatever it happens to be that has a nice round edge to it. Okay. So now each one of those are done and we've cut out every piece and labeled every piece. So now it's time to start measuring where we put all of the pieces on the main body of the bag. And I'm gonna go ahead now with a ruler and my uh, fabric pencil and simply follow her guidelines to measure and mark each one of the placement points. And what's great about this is you'll know where everything is going to go on your uh, main bag piece by these measurements. This is really an important piece to get right. And then once we're done with that, we're gonna go ahead and um, jump into preparing each one of the components. But before we do that, we're working with quilted fabric that we just cut. And on every one of these edges, we now have open threads. So it's really a good, it may take a little bit of time, but it's really a good practice to, to edge stitch around each one of these pieces um, to make sure that the fabric is sealed all the way around and it just makes it easier for um, adding the pieces together once you're putting the components one on top of another um, to have a nice edge that's sealed so that the bag front or the lining doesn't pop up while you're stitching. Because if you can see this right now, there's gonna be open edges that show up here. Take a moment, go to your sewing machine and just do an eighth of an inch stitch all the way around each one of the quilted pieces and it'll be ready to go um, to start sewing up our components. It's time for us to put together the components. I'm gonna start first with some of the easiest things. The first thing is actually the zipper pulls. And so I'm gonna take you through that. And then I'm also gonna take you through the process of making the various straps. The zipper pull is the easiest thing to make. All we're doing is taking our one inch by, I think it's 42 inches here. And I press a seam right down the center. Okay, and then if you have a bias binding tool, it's probably just as easy to use that. Um, but our next step is then to take and fold the edges into your center fold of the strip and create that outside crease. And we'll continue that all the way through the end of the 42 inch long strip. I flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. I do not like working against my natural flow here and for some reason I always like to pull that top piece down not the other way around okay So 
So there's three zippers or zipper poles on the bag. And so we'll cut this, once we have it all pressed and sewn, see how tiny that gets? We'll cut it into oh, about 12 inch, which is probably more than enough to create your zipper pulls. You can make them as long or as short as you'd like. If you have other decorative poles that you'd like to put on your bag, um, that is always a nice added addition to any bag, whether it's for yourself or gifting for someone else. Let's sew the zipper pull. I actually set the zipper pull right underneath the presser foot and make sure you have a little bit of a tail to hold on to as it goes through. Um, and don't worry because you, you definitely have enough of the 42 inches for your three zipper pulls. And then just sew either down the center or over on one side and just guide it through. And once we're done, we'll, I'm just gonna set this aside and I end up trimming them to the length I would like for my zipper pulls. And it's really not very long. I think she suggests 12 inches. And, um, and so that will work as well. And there we go, on to the next step. The next thing we're going to work on is the stabilizer sleeve. And the stabilizer is what goes in the bottom of your bag so that you have the additional um, stability underneath your bag when you have this all filled. And so we want to create a little sleeve to put our stabilizer into. And so we'll take the piece of fabric, and this is from our coordinating fabric, that is um, marked for that stabilizer. And I've already finished off the one edge. I just folded it under a quarter inch and then folded it again, another quarter inch and top stitched. So the next thing we're going to do is create a seam right along the long edge of the sleeve. And the seam here is going to be a half an inch, I believe. Let me double check this. I want to make sure that it's a half an inch. Um, nope, a quarter inch. I believe all of the seam allowances here on Annie's bags are a quarter inch unless she says otherwise. And this one definitely is a quarter inch. So we'll do that here and then open this thing and press it up. I backstitch all the time just to make sure everything is secure as well. <clears throat> Clip your threads and the next thing is to press this seam open and we're going to move it we're not going to have, the seam is actually going to be in the center of the bottom of this sleeve. And so we want this to be pressed open and then we'll press it along the center here. Okay. I'm going to flip it around the other way so that I can actually get this seam open. There we go. Press right along that. Okay. And now we're going to make sure that that is in the center here and stitch along the very end creating our sleeve. 
I always have to keep the pattern pieces here so I know what I'm doing. And again, a quarter inch, and I backspace at each edge. to turn this inside out and that's ready for the stabilizer. I don't have the right size stabilizer here for this bag. So I am going to get those in stock. And I believe this one measures like seven and a third, I think it is, by 16 or 19, I have to double check which one that is. Let's see here. I'm gonna pull that corner out. There we go. I don't have my little bobkin here for making a really, really nice, nice, nice corner but I will take the time to put that together and to flatten that out in a little bit. So there's our sleeve. <laughs> so we have that ready to go and we'll slide in the, whether it's a plexiglass or if you use a heavy cardboard, whatever your choice is to put a stabilizer inside here. And then this is too long. So you'll fold this to the inside, covering up that stabilizer to keep it inside, okay? there we go the next thing that we're going to put together is this strap holder right here and i'm going to stand up and see if i can get this a little bit closer for you but this is your handle to the strap okay and it's the the shoulder pad and there's one piece on the top here that we're going to add binding strips to. And both of these pieces are made out of the quilted fabric. And then we're gonna take binding and we're going to bind this top piece with this bottom piece, creating the channel for the strap. So that's our next step. And I have all of the pieces here that we need to put this together. The top piece is actually the six and a half by two and a half. And then there's two pieces, and these are from the quilted fabric. There's two pieces that are eight and a half by two and a half. And I'm just gonna set those together here, wrong sides together. And this is the one we're gonna work on first, which is the six and a half by two and a half. And then we've also cut out the coordinating fabric, which is the binding, little binding pieces that we're going to put on each edge of the smaller six and a half inch piece. And this measures two inches by two and a half. And so basically what we're going to do is take each one of these, we're gonna press in half, whatever you deem as wrong sides together. And We're gonna sew it to the top and pull it around to the back.
and then simply edge stitch along the top is what I do. And now let's put the other edge on. And this is just the binding. It's just straight binding, so it doesn't have to be cut from the bias binding. I took the eight and a half by two and a half inch um, shoulder pads and used my two and a half inch round template to create my curve here on each side. I'm gonna baste just along each edge, just a little bit, so that these two pieces stay together. An eighth of an inch away from the edge, and again, just a, a basting stitch is what I'm looking for here. Okay. And next, we're gonna center this six and a half inch one that has the binding on it, right, like I said, center, <laughs> right in the center. Okay, and you can eyeball that. And what we're going to do now is baste along each edge here so that we're ready to put the binding on. And go slow, because this is a lot for your sewing machine to go through. It's very thick. There's three layers of quilted fabric here. And I'm gonna go around the edge, the, cur the um, rounded edge. And if you need to use the stiletto to help you keep this going, definitely do. But I'm able to do it pretty well by lifting my presser foot up to make sure I'm going around the curves and not moving anything as I go. Now I'm gonna get rid of all of these threads. Now it's time to add the binding to the shoulder pad. And when you follow the instructions to create your bias binding, there is a segment of the binding that is two and a quarter inches and the rest are two and a half. We're going to use the two and a quarter strip to bind this shoulder pad. And I start by positioning the binding right, well, let me go a little bit further than that. Kind of right there towards the curve, because what I wanna do is have enough space in the middle to be able to join the binding once I'm back around that side over here. And I'm gonna stop right as I kind of get to that curve. I just need to have as much space as I can to join the binding. And so that's the approach I take. So I'm just gonna start over here and I'll remove the pins as I go around. And again, if you like to use the stiletto to keep everything um, flat as you turn, by all means, use this stiletto. It's a perfect thing to use. And I like using that tool once I flip it around to the top to make sure that everything lies flat. So I'm gonna go ahead and bind this and I'll show you what it looks like when we're all through. Take the rest of these pins out because I won't need that. And let's see how we did. So we wanna make sure that everything will flip over the edges nicely. Oh, that's gonna be great. Okay. Okay, but before we do that, we have to join our binding strips together. So what I do is I will lay, position the bottom piece flat, okay? And then I'm gonna just double check and see how much I can cut off here. And the top piece will be flat down on top of that, okay? Lay that flat. 
So, because I want to make sure I have a little bit of overlap where there's not a seam, because I have a seam right here that I want to avoid. So, I'm going to cut that bottom one way up here. And then measure down two and a quarter inches from there. And I don't think I have my marking pencil here, so I'll use a pin. That's two and a quarter. And I'm just poking it right into the batting on the edge, right there. And now I'll drop this one down. And I don't know if you can see that, but that's what I'm trying to do is Here's the pin for the two and a quarter inches. And now from that, where, that, where I cut that bottom piece, the bottom binding off, I'm going to overlap. And then where that pin is, is where I'm going to cut the binding. Okay. And now I'm going to open this up, right sides together. Actually, I'm going to put a pin right in the corner first. And I'm going to clip this so that it's flat and out of my way. There we go. Get rid of that bulk. So now I can sew my diagonal to create a really, really nice finish to the binding. Make sure I did this correctly, yes. And I'm gonna trim off the quarter inch, off to a quarter inch. And open up that seam. And just, I mean, the warmth of your finger is enough to keep that open. And then finish stitching it to the opening. We'll close that up. after I wind a new bobbin. <laughs> well, the new bobbin is in <laughs> and I did finish stitching down the edge of the binding. And so now I'm gonna pull it around to the front. It is tight. That is a tight curve to turn or to sew your binding down on and then bring it around. So it is pretty tight, but that's why it has to be a bias strip because there's no other way you can make that look nice if it were a um, straight edge. Okay, so work this around a little bit because it is going to get um, a little tight on your edges and we'll bring that around. I'm gonna use clips just to make sure that it is even here. And then I'm gonna to top stitch. I'm bringing this around to the front and I don't want any kind of pucker or roll in this here. There we go. Just kind of on the pressure points. I'm gonna move that around with the stiletto as I go. I do have a little pucker there, but 
we'll make sure that that goes, there we go, back down. Right along there. I'm gonna put another clip here. So let's top stitch around and we'll be done with the shoulder strap. And the strap will go through each edge here, the opening from the top piece to the back. Okay, here we go. And I'm getting this ready because I love working with this stiletto. And there's the bottom. Not too bad. I'm getting better on my top stitching. <laughs> so that is the shoulder pad that we have. And next we're going to make the straps. I already did one and I'm going to show you the finished. Here it is. The finished strap. And I believe this one is the carrying strap uh, stabilizer. And so basically what we're going to do, yes, carrying strap stabilizer, which is six, 60 inches. And we're gonna do the same thing for the shoulder strap that I did here. And basically, here's the steps. I, I kind of organize everything together. I took the fabric as well as the strapping that's going to go inside. And this strapping is, 103 inches long so get ready to try to put this through our casing once we get that sewn but this takes three segments of our um two and three fourths inch wide strips okay so what we have to do is stitch these strips together and i'm going to just set that over there actually put that over there and using a half inch seam allowance on this one. And then, actually I'll just do it as we go. And right sides together, but I, I have to honestly tell you when you're working with this batik, you can't tell the difference. So I'm just gonna stitch them together with a half inch seam allowance. Okay. Now I'm gonna find the next segment. And again, right sides together. Okay. Now what we're going to do is, if you need to, you can press. I'm gonna set this aside here but we need to press these seams open. And then you can either finger press them or use your iron. My iron's hot, so I'm going to do it that way. And we're gonna top stitch these seams down because this is gonna be a casing and there's nothing worse than getting to the center of a casing and not being able to get past a seam when you have, uh, when you're trying to put, whether it be elastic or strapping inside. So we wanna make sure that that is, is open enough to be able to put the, the um, strapping inside. So I just simply top stitch at the edge of each one of these seams, the end of the seams. 
as close as you feel comfortable. Stitching. And um, mine just ends up being about the same. I follow the center seam actually, and it's the same on both sides. Okay. <laughs> it is so long, 103 inches. Okay, so now with right sides together, and I don't press this, so don't press this because you're gonna want you're gonna want to open this up again anyway. But um, stitch your quarter inch all the way down the length of this strip, and um, you do not have to watch me sewing this. I'll be right back. I finished stitching <laughs> along this long edge. And now what I'm taking the time to do is I'm actually pressing the seam open. What I'm trying to do is, is not necessarily get the full seam open, but I'm just trying to get it open so that, so that the seam will lay flat once we turn the tube around um, right side out. And I'm not pressing against the fold, I'm only trying to get um, the top edge of the seam away from the other edge so that when we do turn it, it'll lay flat. So take a moment to try to do that. You don't have to do that, um, but I just think it makes the edge of the casing inside when we turn it so much nicer. Um, at least that's what I have found. So I'm gonna finish pressing this and then we're gonna turn it around. <laughs> the strap casing is now ironed and the seam for this casing is actually running down the center of the bottom edge of it. So it's not running along the side, it's actually running down the center. And now I've put a safety pin, cause that's really all I have here at the moment, <laughs> on the edge. And I fill up the space of the safety pin with whatever I'm running it through, whether it's elastic or it's strapping, um, just so that there's no bulk between the top of the fastener and the actual um, strapping itself. So if you have, um, again, if you have a bobkin or something that is easy to use, just go right ahead and do that. So I'm just gonna continue moving this along. Now, the one thing that I also do is I put a pin on the other end as well, because um, if for some reason, well, I know the strap uh, the fabric is actually a little bit longer than the strapping that you're putting inside. And so we want to make sure that we balance it out a little bit. And then we're going to flip the edges of the fabric inside just so that we have a nice clean edge when we top stitch all the way around the edge, the outside edge, about an eighth of an inch away from the outside edge. We're going to top stitch all the way around. So um, once I get this strapping in, that's the next thing that I'm going to do is simply put the um, raw edges inside each edge of the casing and then we'll be ready to go. And I think our next step is to start adding the hardware to the strapping, um, which is always a lot of fun. So I'll finish this up and then we'll jump to the next step. Okay. So now we have the long strap that will be your handles. And we're just gonna set that aside until a little bit later. And the other strap that we made is the carrying strap, um, which is the one that's going to be going over your shoulder. And the first thing that we need to do now is get some hardware in place. And I selected the, um, antique brass sliders. They're the wide mouth sliders. And we only need one for this project. And what we're going to do now, remember with 
with the strap, there's the seam side, which is your bottom side, side you don't really want to show. And then the really, really nice side. <laughs> and so we're going to take the slider with the with the right side up. It has a little bit of a curve to it, as you'll see. I don't know if you can see from there. Maybe if I can put something against a white background. And so what we want to do is with the um, seam side, go up into one side of the slider, and then we're going to take it and go down the other side. Okay. And so this is going to be the piece that slides along our shoulder strap and we have to secure it. Um, and I think Annie, I'm going to read this again, but I think in the pattern, it's like an inch and a half. Yes. Um, we want to overlap again, wrong side to wrong side. So we want to overlap this about an inch and a half. And I have that a little too far, but just, just to eyeball it, I suppose. There we go. It's about an inch and a half. And I'm going to use a little clip on each edge. Now we're going to sew this in place. And I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to show you how the finished one looks here. Let me grab the bag and we'll come up really close here. I suppose I could take this off. Here's the shoulder strap that we're putting together here. Okay. And the slider or the, yeah, the wide mouth slider is right. It's this one. And so what we're trying to do right now is to create that finished look attaching the slider to the end of the strap. And then we'll come back and do the next step. So for now, we're just going to stitch this down. And I really love how she always does the finishes, which is just a simple um, square around the edges with an X right through the center. So it gives it a little bit more stability. So now we have the slider on our strap. Okay, now we take our swivel hooks and with the right side of the strap up, we're going to slide one of the hooks onto the strap. And always make sure that the right side of the strap is up and that we're not twisted in any way. So now I have this straight. And then we're gonna take the open end and go back into our slider and up and over here because that's how we're going to be able to adjust our strap and then we want to put the other slide uh, other not slider hook in here the same way and then overlap this again about an inch and a half i think where's my ruler That's about right. And do the same top stitching to secure it. Wonderful. So now we have our strap that has both swivels and the slider on it. And we get to set this aside until later. Sometimes I feel like we set it, we see we're making all the components and then we set them aside. So the next one that we're going to make is the carrying strap tabs, which are the straps here that are attached to the side of the bag that have either a triangle ring on it or a D ring. The carrying strap tabs are the pieces that are um, two and three fourths by 18 and a half inches. And so one of these will be sewn to this side of the bag and the other to the other side of the bag. And we're making these the exact same way that we did the long straps. So we're going to fold this in half, stitch completely along the long edge. 
a half or a quarter of an inch. Turn it inside out and insert our straps inside. And then we're gonna top stitch all the way around the edges on each one, preparing it the exact same way. It just happens to be a little bit shorter. And then I have D rings that I'm going to use. And again, we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna slide the D ring on and flip it under to the wrong side an inch and a half, top stitch our box with an X, and we'll have two of these straps ready to attach to the side of our bag when we get to that step. We're gonna prepare each one of the pockets um, so that we're ready to assemble the bag once we start putting everything on the inside of the bag and the outside of the bag. So we need to create the front zipper pocket first, and then we'll make all of the other pockets. And what we mean by that is we're simply going to take the quilted fabric, add a zipper to it, add a binding to it, add all of the finishing touches to it so that when it is added to the outside or inside of the bag, it's all ready to just do step-by-step step and, and add it to the bag. So we have four outside pockets, and then we also have two pockets that go along the long edges of the bag. And one of them is made from the coordinating fabric with binding on top of it. And the other is made with the mesh and the elastic fold over elastic. So we'll be able to do a couple of different techniques with this bag. The first thing is we have all of our pieces for pocket A, B, which is the front pocket with a zipper. And so the first thing we're going to do, make sure, I, again, I keep all my little tabs here, but the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add our zipper to the top edge of the long portion. Here's the outside, it's gonna look like this. We're gonna add that to the right side of our quilted fabric marked pocket A. And I'm just gonna take you through a couple of steps. Um, and I might actually do this a little bit closer so that you can actually see, but we're going to stitch along the edge. We're gonna flip the zipper so it's right side out, hand press it and top stitch it. Then we'll add the border to it, which we have to interface the same steps We'll stitch it to the other side of the zipper, flip it over and top stitch it. So we have a really nice front facing for our pocket. So that's the first thing we're going to do.
zipper in between the border and the pocket, the main portion of the pocket for pocket A, which is on the front of the bag. Now what we need to do is make our inner pocket, which will also be from the quilted fabric. And we're gonna position these one right on top of another so that when we open up the zipper, we'll be able to see this really, really nice quilted fabric on the inside. If your pockets don't line up exactly the same, one might be a, a little bit larger. A may be a little bit bigger than the inside, which is B. If so, trim down A. And what I did is I did have to trim the bottom because it was about a quarter of an inch too long. So definitely go ahead and trim that, whether or not you trim the, the, the border on top or um, the main pocket piece is completely up to you. So I am going to clip these together and just to keep everything lined up as I do my sewing. And we're gonna sew all the way around all four sides at an eighth of an inch. And then I'm gonna come back and add binding to the top here. That'll be our finished edge on the front of the pocket. The next two things we have to do is add the binding to pocket C and the binding to pockets, and these are the end pockets of the outside of the bag, um, pockets e, D and E. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add the binding to the top edge of those. There's no other um, finishing touch needed before it's added to the bag. So we'll do those first. Doing it is definitely to, let's stitch it to the back of the
seconds. The first one we're going to do is made from the coordinating fabric and um, it needs a little bit of fusible interfacing in it for stability purposes. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take this pocket G is what it is and um, we're going to fold it in half and use your iron and I do this actually um, reverse I think of what is in the pattern but um, I just press it so that we have a good um, seam so we know what the middle of the fabric is lengthwise okay and then i pop it open so that i'm seeing the wrong side lay the fusible web inside your fusible interfacing right i'm going to do it this way because there's a little bit of a strange crease at the bottom um center it left to right and there's a it's about three-fourths of an inch away from the bottom edge and this is going to give it stability right up to the fold and also remove any extra fullness and fusible interfacing from the seam lines because those are what get stitched inside the bag so what i'm going to do is fuse this down to the wrong side of the fabric I just use that middle crease that I made as my marking point. Pull this right back down again. So now I'm back on that half of my fabric here. And what I'm gonna do is top stitch along the edge so that we have a nice finished edge. And that will just take one minute. It's nice how everything is really is top stitched and looks so beautifully finished in these patterns. And I top stitched with an eighth of an inch stitch so that it is just running along the very edge without being too close. So that's finished. Clipping my threads away. So now I have that pocket that's ready to go on. And the next pocket that we are going to make is from the mesh. And we're going to, I used the, um, or I selected the natural color mesh by Annie to go inside because the inside of my bag is going to be this Phoenix Sand Surf color. And so I really want it to be um, more blendy and it almost invisible, it's going to be almost invisible inside there. And then the, um, the top edge of the mesh, we're going to use fold over elastic. And this has a natural crease to the middle of it, so it'll be very easy to fold over that top edge of our mesh and stitch down. You get to select whatever side of the uh, elastic you prefer. There's kind of a, a dollar side or a matte side to this, and then there's a sparkly side. And um, I can't see why you wouldn't want the sparkly side on the outside. So that's what I'm going to do. But I am going to change my thread, like I said, to be a, a natural color to match my elastic. And then on the bottom, so that's going to run ac across the top of this mesh. And then on the bottom, we're going to, to attach a standard typical binding that is from the coordinating fabric. So one will have fold over elastic and it will allow the opening of the mesh to be flexible. And then the bottom will have the binding on it, but it will match the coordinating fabric for the inside of the bag.
finished all the pockets for the inside and the outside of our bag. The next thing that we're going to do is finish the sides, the outer sides of the bag. And so let me show you here. What we're going to do is we're going to take the side piece. We're going to add the center strap handle here inside, and that'll have our um, triangle on it that holds our strap in place. Then on top of that, we'll add the pocket that we just made. Okay, so we have a few pieces here. Here's the end of our bag. And then here is the handle that we're gonna sew to the center of this bag, bag end. You might wanna know where we're gonna put that probably, right? Well, in an earlier step, we measured in from the edge three inches, the left edge, and drew a line. The left edge of our handle is going to be positioned right next to that line with the bottom of the handle flush with the bottom of our side piece. We'll stitch following the stitch line all the way around the outside, make an X through our square that you put in that we put in here earlier and then follow it all the way back down the other edge. Then we'll add the pocket to the front of that, stitching again an eighth of an inch from the edge. So all we're trying to do is secure these together. And we'll stitch those an eighth of an inch all the way along the edge so that we're seeing the right side of both of these pieces with the handle inside. time to put all of our pieces and parts together and this is the fun part well not that it, the other stuff wasn't fun but you know what I'm saying it's like the bag is starting to now take shape and so what we're gonna do is just make sure that you have all of your pockets and everything nearby and follow the instructions on this one there's a couple of um, things to remember that I want to remind you I'm not gonna take you through every single one of the steps here um, because you know how to stitch down a pocket I think the goal is to always remember and refer to the markings um, when we're now adding all of the pieces to this main portion of the bag. So on an earlier step, we, we uh, marked all of the positioning with a fabric pencil. And we also made sure that we have a pin or some indicator to mark one edge, one short edge of your main bag. Always remember to reference that. 
until you're told to take it out, <laughs> okay? Um, because we wanna make sure that we have everything positioned in the right places. And the other thing that I'm going to do first that you should do is we're going to stitch across the ends of each short end of the bag, which is gonna make it easier for the bag to fold because it's gonna have a stitch line through it. And that fold is important because when we sew our end pieces on, it'll make it so much easier to have a nice even edge here. So that stitch line that I'm referencing is running right across the top and forms this really nice flat duffel bag. So don't forget that step. Otherwise, I believe that the soft and stable will be a little bit stiffer and it's going to curl, but this gives it a nice flat duffel look and also creates that spot where our ends finish against the top of the bag. Okay, so go through this step and add all of the pockets, making sure again that you remember where the top or one edge of the bag is. And I'm gonna show you each little step as I go, but not all of the detail steps, okay? So the first thing is to stitch up our fold positions, and then we're going to add the zipper pocket, pocket AB is how it's referenced, to the main portion of the bag where the markings are.
our bag construction is sewing the straps onto the outside of the bag. And you might be wondering, I'm sitting here with a completed bag. I apologize. These video steps that I took for this particular portion did not turn out right. And so what I'm gonna do is show you what to do with the straps. It's extraordinarily easy and the importance of where we place them and how to attach them. Here is the image of our completed duffel with the strap already attached. And what I wanna show you is the process of adding that strap. One thing to do right away is take your long strap and create, fold it in half so you know where the middle point of that long strap is. That should be positioned, I'm gonna tip this over, right here in the center of the bottom of your bag. And remember, you drew a line right across the bottom as your indicator of where that is. So this should be the halfway point of your folded long strap. And you can see over here, this is where the ends of the strap are joined side by side. And the rest of your strap goes to the front and to the back of the bag. So pin if you can, or you can even fuse along the way here, but pin right here so that you know where your starting spot is and make sure that when you position your strap on your bag and lay it out, that it is flat all the way around and so that the back side or the wrong side of your strap is always facing the bag, touching the bag just as it's shown here. And our goal, again, is to just simply position your strap where your um, pencil markings are. Everything should fit just perfectly. And so what I did is I simply started on one portion of the bag and stitched along the outside and then finished up here. Now follow the pattern with the measurements because it shows you how far down from the top of the bag you should be positioning your X's to make sure that they match on both sides here of the bag. And so I just went up, across, down, made my X, went back down, made my X, went back down, across and back, and then completed attaching all the way down to the end here. Then I took this side over here and did the exact same thing. Matching this here, creating your X, and then coming back down again. Then I finished with the side over here that simply is, there's no attachment here, that's just the middle of your strap, and go all the way up to the top here, and everything is attached. And again, what you're also doing here, by stitching the, the edges of your strap, following your prior stitch line is you're covering your pockets. Everything's getting finished all at once. And then on the inside, what you're doing is, I don't know if you can see this, but you're also adding your stitch lines, which are your dividers for your pockets. So everything is getting finished all at once. We are getting close to the end of this little journey of making our duffel bag. Um, this is really going to be the fun part. And I was looking through the instructions and basically um, the next step, as you can see, what I have right here is I've turned the bag now that it has its zipper on the top. And I think I left you adding the straps. And so all you needed to do was finish by adding the zipper and then top stitching the edges of the zipper. And um, now I turned it inside out and we have marked all four sides, the centers 
of each one of the ends here, okay? We need to know the center, top, bottom, left and right, because we're gonna match these markers to the top, bottom, left and right of the bag. So with right sides together, making sure that our hook for the strap is facing up, so it has to be on the side with the zipper, okay? Kind of like this. I'll just kind of situate it here so that you can at least see what we're attempting to do. And I'm gonna take clips and clip it in the four points here and then in between. And once that's all clipped, um, use as many clips as you want. I use a lot of clips just to make sure that I have everything in place. And then the best way to stitch this, because now we have to stitch a half an inch, or not a half an inch, a quarter of an inch all the way around. Make sure that this piece, your end piece, is on the base of your sewing machine so that you can move and push the bag portion of, of your bag around the flat surface of the end of your bag. It just makes it so much easier. And you're gonna be stitching around the curves and use your, um, where do I have it here? Use your stiletto to help you kind of move around the corners and go slow. And um, actually it's gonna be easier than you think. So I'm gonna start this, get this all clipped up and we're gonna put this underneath the sewing machine needle and we're gonna finish one of these ends. Yesterday, I did finish adding, I think where we left off, I have to remember here, um, the sides to the main portion of the bag, which was really kind of interesting doing with a very uh, smallish uh, Janome sewing machine, um, but it can be done, which is fantastic. Then I did all of the binding inside around the exposed edges for each one of the sides added our shoulder strap that had already been done ahead of time. Isn't it great when all the little things that you prepared ahead of time, you can just add to it. Um, and then also added the ties that go on each one of the zipper pulls. And um, I have to say that I really, really love this bag. And um, it was an experience. 
of, I think for me this time, I've made a couple of other bags, but for me this time, working with a flat, very flat rectangular end was new for me. And so just remembering to always stitch when you're sewing it together, for me, the lesson learned was working in a sequence. So always having the flat portion on your sewing table. And that really made it easier to go all the way around, attaching the two together. And then same thing with the binding, uh, binding it with the flat portion of the bag down and then turning the binding around, working the other way. And the more you sew on that outside edge, which, which you think initially is going to be extremely bulky, um, the more stitching you do around it, the easier it is to actually stitch it because it's creating its own little quarter inch um, uh, seam line, which was great. So turning it inside out. And what I have to do next is, remember we made our, the bag stabilizer for the bottom. I have to insert that in here and add it to the bottom of our bag so that once I start putting things into it, we have a really nice stable bottom to this bag. So here is the original bag that I was referencing the whole time <laughs> from um, the By Annie team. And this one was made from our Copen Blue and it is Medora Flora. That's the colorway for this cotton bag. And, and um, I just love the ribbon that she added to this bag style here. And then our new one, which is the Gardenista Vine Lake Color Family that we have on our website as a coordinate and the spray as the accent here. And then inside we used our, can't really see that very well, but our sand surf, the Phoenix sand surf as an inside lining. So that is our get out of town duffel. And, um, I really love it. So I have to clean up my workspace and all of that. I had a little bit of binding left over. We have our fun little, you know, the hardware that we get from Annie um, comes in this little plastic case that you can use for anything else. And so I'm going to put that to good use. And then I also have another slide that I can put onto something. So that'll be fun. I'm thinking of a belt buckle and um, we'll use that and all of our little pieces of paper <laughs> that we use to identify each one of the components of the bag. So I just tucked that back into my get out of town pattern and there we go. We're ready for the next time we wanna make another bag. So I hope this has been educational and enjoyable. And if you have any questions, let us know down in the question below and um, Happy bag making. <laughs>